Hi, my name is Ed and welcome to this video from the Vision Australia Talking Book Library Service. Today I'm going to talk about the Envoy Connect Talking Book Player. This video was recorded in September 2020 and it coincides with a new firmware release for this player. This new firmware is called T16 and basically we've made it even easier for you to use this Talking Book Player. For those of you who may have had one of these players before, you may notice a few little behavioural changes for this player. And for those of you who haven't had one before, you might find this video useful as well, as I'll go through a basic uh, introduction and overview of the player, and we'll have you up and running listening to talking books in no time at all as well. Okay, the first thing you might notice when you have the player in the palm of your hand is at the top of the front face is the speaker grill. The round speaker grill is at the top of the player and it's quite tactile, it's ribbed from left to right. So if you can feel those ribs on the speaker grill, you'll always know that you've got the player facing towards you. Below the speaker, there's two rows of buttons and a little later I'll dis uh, give a demonstration of how those different buttons work. But just to describe them at this point, then in the middle on the bottom row is the largest button and I call it the main button. That's how you turn the player on and also how you push play to make your books play on the player. On the right hand side is a forward button and on the left hand side on the bottom row is the back button. On the row above in the middle is the bookshelf button and that's the button that you use to change books on the player. To the right of that there's a sleep timer button and you can push that once to set the player to sleep in 15 minutes push it again for 30 minutes and a third time for 60 minutes and that sleep timer button allows you to uh, set, the, set the player up so that if you think you might fall asleep while you're listening to a book the player will automatically turn off after the amount of time that you set it to. To the left of the bookshelf button is the volume up button and the volume down button. If you push the top of the button you'll turn the player volume up and if you push the bottom button there then you'll turn the player volume down. On the bottom of the player there's three holes. On the left there is the headphone socket. Uh, the headphone socket is the round one and the player does come with a set of earphones so you can plug those in and it will automatically mute the speaker or you can use a set of headphones that you might have at your place. And of course that's great for if you don't want to disturb the whole house while you're listening to your talking books. In the middle is the USB socket or hole. Uh, the player comes with a USB cable and you can use that to charge the player or you can use it to move books on and off the player. Now we have a service where you can send the player backwards and forwards from the library service and we'll load the books on and off the player for you. However, you can use the USB cable to connect it to a computer if you're a computer user and move books on and off the player yourself. I'll do a separate little video about how to do that. Um, but it's good to point out that you don't have to have a computer or be a computer user in order to use this player. You can just send the player back to the library and we can move books on and off the player for you. To the right of the USB socket is an SD card socket. Now you can, uh, the player doesn't come with an SD card, but if you buy an SD card you can expand the capacity of the player from its uh, original 8 gigabyte capacity and you can expand it upwards according to the size of the SD card that you buy. Now my tip at the moment is that you don't need to rush out and buy an SD card to expand the capacity of the player because the player is an 8 gig internal capacity so even without an extra SD card then the player will hold 10, 20, 30, even 40 books comfortably so there's no need to rush out and buy 
an SD card for the player. So the last thing to say for describing the player and the buttons on the player is that if when a book is paused and the light is flashing then you can push the forward key and the back key together at the same time and the player will describe the serial number for this particular player and the version number of the firmware that's currently loaded onto the player. So I'll just push those together on my player. Serial number one 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 zero 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 three seven seven. Envoy connect two zero zero six two nine T one six. So that's how I know that this player currently has T one six firmware version T sixteen loaded onto it. Um, it's not really possible to change the firmware at home however if you send the player into the library we can update the firmware version on your player if that needs to happen. Now before I give a demonstration of the buttons and playing a talking book then I'll take a moment just to talk about charging the player. The back of the player has a solar panel on it that's one way you can charge the pa uh, charge the player or keep the pl uh, the charge up to the player. If you to expose the ba the solar panel to sunlight, for instance, on a window sill, then that will extend the charge life of the player, or it will fully even fully charge the player from scratch if you leave it exposed for a long time, say for up to eight hours on a window sill. However, there are faster ways to charge the player. As I said before, the player comes with a you, uh, comes with the USB plug and cable, and if you plug that into the player using the USB socket on the bottom, just plug that in there. It doesn't come with a wall socket charger like that. However, these are readily available even from the supermarket, $2 shop, maybe somewhere like Kmart, they always have these available so they're easy to get. And That's how you can get a fast charge for the player. Even a couple of hours plugged into the wall using a plug like that and you'll be fully charged. There's a couple of ways you can know that it's fully charged. When you plug it into the wall the, the light will blink slowly and when it goes solid then you know that the player is fully charged or when it's paused like this you can push the rewind key I'll just turn the player on Penny Wong Passion and Principle by Margaret Simons Narrated by Noni Casey So now that the player is paused and the light is flashing then I can also push hold down the rewind key three charges three beeps like that means that the player is fully charged if it was to beep twice it means it's a medium charge if it only beeps once when I hold down the rewind key that's three times because it's fully charged if it only beeps once then it means that it's time to uh, give the player a charge what I do is I use mine a bit like a mobile phone. You can't overcharge the player, so when I'm not using it, then I just pop it onto the onto the wall charger, and that way the player's always ready to go uh, when I'm ready to listen to my talking books. The other way that you can charge it is you can plug it into a computer, and that will also give a faster charge than just using the solar panel alone. And if the player is off when you plug it back in when you plug it into the computer then the player will be charging as long as the USB socket on the computer is getting power okay now I'll give a demonstration showing you how easy it is to play a talking book using the Envoy Connect player the way we turn it on is we go to the main button at the bottom and we press and hold it for two seconds the light comes on or you get the wake up chime there and you might have noticed before Passion and Principle by Margaret Simons 
Narrated by Noni Casey. You may have noticed before that the that it always when you turn it on it always announces the book that you're currently focused on some people think that it's gone back to the start of the book but it hasn't it just always wants to remind you when you turn it on about the book that you're currently listening to and once the player's turned on like that it's gone quiet all I need to do is to go back to the main button and instead of holding it down to turn the player on I can just click it She wrote a poem about a shark. And when I'm she ready to pause the player, that year she had two. I just keep, click that button again and it's gone back into pause mode. And if I leave it in pause mode for two minutes, then the player will turn itself off. So you don't actually ever even have to turn the player off once you've finished reading. When I'm playing a book, Good poet for her age. That year she had two then I can go to the forward button. And it will jump chapter forwards two. by the section, chapter two. And bullies. There is a store. Chapter three. Chapter three. Becoming or using neighbor. the rewind key. Towards the end of ninety chapter three. Chapter two. Then I'm going back to this chapter two. So I can jump forwards and backwards through the book. If I hold those keys story. down or not so much a story as a memory from her child. Instead of clicking them. I'll just pause it again. Then those beeps, when I held the forwards and back keys down, then they were telling me that it was moving f through that chapter that I was currently on by 30 second intervals. Because the book is currently paused, then I can also go up to the sleep timer key that I thought showed you before, and I can set it for 15 minutes sleep, 30 minutes sleep, 60 minutes sleep and then the downward inflection in the tones tells me that I've turned the sleep timer key off. On the other side of course is the volume up and down keys and I can use that while the book is playing. It is a moving picture because of the combination of Lay's pose and her And I can turn the, po the, the volume down. You can see she loves me. Down to very quiet, or I can turn it up. When it gets to the top volume, it'll double beep like that. So down, arriving on her second birthday, or up, up to top volume. And if I pause the book again by clicking the play key, then I can turn, still turn the player up or down while the book is paused and it will just emit different volume tones to tell me whether the, it's getting louder or softer. So you can see that it really is simple to use this player. All I did was turn the player on it by holding the main play key down for two seconds and then um, it always announces the book that it's currently focused on and then I just click the play key to start the book playing or click it again to pause the book and then once the book is paused after two minutes the player will turn itself off so I'll just do that again from scratch so I'm going to hold it down for five seconds to manually turn the player off two three four five <laughs> so now the player's off so I'll just do that again. The simplest way to play a talking book from this player is hold the main play key down two seconds. Get the wake up chime. It will announce the book that it's currently focused on. It hasn't gone back to the start of the book. It's just making the announcement announcement to remind me what book I'm currently focused on. Now that it's finished making that announcement then all I need to do is click the main play key there using a mixture of Chinese probably Hakka dialect 
and it started playing from the last place where I had been listening to that book. If I go back to pause, then now that the player is paused, I can push the bookshelf key and it initially told me what book I'm currently focused on. If I push it again, Then it's moved to the next book. If I push it again, every second counts. By Lance Armstrong with Sally Jenkins. Then it's moving through the different books. By RNIB. I push it again. Floor by Lee Child. Now. This book is produced by RNIB. RNIB supporting blind and partially sighted. And now all I need to do to start listening to Killing Fields by Lee Childs is push the play key. Killing Floor by Lee Child. Killing Floor. <laughs> this book is produced by RNIB. RNIB. Supporting blind and partially sighted people. The recording of this book has been made possible by a kind donation from the staff at State Street, Edinburgh and push it again to pause the book. And then if I'm finished reading for the day, I've started reading uh, The Killing Floor by Lee Child, then all I need to do is leave it in pause mode and after two minutes it will beep and turn itself off. So it's that easy to listen and pause books and the player will always remember where each book is up to. Okay, the last thing that I'll show you how to do using the buttons is how to delete a book. With the uh, previous firmware versions, all you had to do was hold down the bookshelf key uh, for five seconds and it would delete the book that you were currently focused on. We did find that people were accidentally uh, deleting books a little bit too easily. So in this firmware version, we've changed the behavior for deleting a book. So now what you do is you, that you hold down the bookshelf key and the volume up buttons together for five seconds and the player will start beeping. And that last series of button End trills point. there. Quick start guide. Of course, it started announcing the next book that it had moved on to because I deleted the previous one. That final set of little chimes there, be 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 be, that tells you that the book that you're on has been deleted. If you if you find that tricky to do, you don't have to delete the books at all, especially if you're sending the uh, the player back to us uh, for reloading of books. We'll delete the books for you. And so I hope that makes things easier and have shown you how easy it is to use this talking book player. Um, in the next video what I'll do is I'll show you how to use the software, the book loading software that comes with the player that's called iAccess Kiosk. Like I said, uh, don't worry if you're not a computer user, you can always send the player back to the library for loading of new books. And you can always call us if you've got any questions, queries or comments. You can call us on 1300 654 656. That's 1300 654 656 in Australia. Or you can email library at visionaustralia.org. I hope that was helpful. Happy reading everybody.